Good afternoon from Hawthorne, California. It is June 25th, just after 1 p.m. Pacific time. Welcome to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying the second flight of 10 Iridium Next satellites. You are seeing a live view of Falcon 9 through the fog at Vandenberg as we prepare for launch in just under 15 minutes. Launch is currently scheduled for 20 hours, 25 minutes, 18 seconds universal time or 1.25.18 Pacific Daylight Saving Time. I'm John Innsbrucker, Falcon 9 Principal Integration Engineer, and I'll be bringing you coverage of the SpaceX launch of Iridium Next during the webcast. This is our second launch for our Iridium customer. Our first launch for Iridium was in January of this year, and as it would happen, 48 hours ago, that first stage successfully reflew to space carrying Bulgaria Sat-1. Today's launch is from Space Launch Complex 4 at Vandenberg Air Force Base, our West Coast launch site. You can see, as I said, through the fog, we were hoping the fog would have lifted by now, but a two-stage Falcon 9 vehicle, which is standing 70 meters tall, taller than a 20-story building. Now the first stage provides the initial force to get out of the majority of Earth's atmosphere. It carries the second stage and spacecraft up to about 100 kilometers or 60 miles. The first stage today will return to our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions. Now currently in the drone ship, it's fairly windy. Conditions are marginal, I think Elon's been tweeting, but we are still go for landing. The second stage, on top of the first stage, will take the satellites from the edge of space and accelerate them to the orbital speeds of just over seven and a half kilometers per second, ten times faster than a speeding bullet. At the very top of the stack, somewhat obscured by the gaseous oxygen plume, is the 17-foot diameter payload fairing within which are the 10 Iridium satellites. Next to the rocket, you can see structure. This is transporter erector. There are two major parts to the transporter erector. At the bottom is the launch mount. That's what the rocket sits upon and provides connections to the first stage. That's that gray area that you see around the engine nozzles. The white area is the strongback. It's a vertical tower that provides connections to the second stage and the spacecraft. These connections are umbilicals. They carry power, propellant, gases, electrical commands, and telemetry. Now one reminder for today's launch, unlike our CAPE launches at Kennedy Space Center, the transporter erector will recline to the flight position of 77 half degrees before liftoff. Now we're currently at T-minus 11 minutes and 25 seconds and counting. We are still on schedule for an on-time launch at just after 25 minutes after the hour. For the Falcon 9 team, we're working no significant issues. We began loading propellants at T-minus 60 minutes. Fuel is currently loaded on the second stage, and fuel is pretty much loaded on the first stage. We have a little topping off that we have to do, and that'll finish at about T-minus 7 minutes. Liquid oxygen load is underway on both stages as we're filling the voluminous first and second stages with that ultra-cold liquid oxygen. Now our next major activity coming up will be opening the pre-valves between the first stage tanks and the engines to chill in the pumps coming at T minus seven minutes. Now it's hard to see on the view, but we are flying our new titanium grid fins. These are the dark gray fins you can see right in the middle of your image. These are slightly larger, thermally more robust to be able to survive the heat of re-entry of the first stage. We'll see how they work today. On the spacecraft side, the Iridium team is already on internal power. No significant issues in work. They are ready for launch. The range, we're launching out of Vandenberg today. That's the Air Force Western Range. They're providing similar support as the Eastern Range. One issue which has cleared earlier this afternoon, there was a ship in proximity to the drone ship that ship is now out of the keep out zone and we're good to land the first stage. And finally, the weather is excellent other than the views on the pad where we have fog, but we hope to get some shots from the onboard cameras as we rise out of the fog layer, which is so typical of Vandenberg. So right now at T minus nine minutes and 45 seconds, everything's going well.
Now today, SpaceX is launching 10 Iridium Next satellites. This is our second launch that we have on contract with Iridium. Each of the 10 satellites has a mass of about 600 kilograms. And when the solar rays on each satellite are fully deployed, they'll span almost over nine meters in wingspan. Now in order to correctly position the satellites, the SpaceX team has to launch right on the second. So as I mentioned, we have a one second window today. We do have a backup opportunity tomorrow should we need it. Now when the Falcon 9 carries the Uranium satellites into the deployment orbit, that'll be a target of 625 kilometers altitude. Once we're there, Falcon 9 will send commands to each satellite separation system. The satellites will be released one at a time and a spacing of every 100 seconds. So the whole sequence will take us 15 minutes from start to finish. Now once deployed, these 10 satellites will augment the 10 that are already launched earlier this year. The final plan is for a constellation of 75 Iridium Next satellites, which will allow cross-linking between four other satellites, allowing anybody on Earth to contact any other place on Earth. With a little bit more information on the Iridium constellation and system, we had an interview with Matt Desch, the CEO of Iridium. We'll play that video for you now. So we are in the Iridium SNOC, that's an acronym for the Satellite Network Operations Center. Uh, this is a center in Northern Virginia, about 30 miles or so outside of Washington, D.C., where for the last 20 years we've been running our Iridium satellite constellation and flying it uh, and controlling the satellites and managing it. And where on launch day, we'll be anxiously awaiting the 10 new satellites that will come off the dispenser about 100 minutes into the flight and start phoning home and being managed by these control displays and the people who man this center. So about an hour into the flight, the satellites will start coming off the dispenser about once every minute and a half until they're all deployed. Each satellite will boot itself up, if you will. It will deploy its solar panels, it'll find the sun, it will find the horizon, it'll start positioning itself, and it will start using its secondary data channel to try to communicate with this facility. I mean, this is an example of one of the screens that the operator uses uh, in, in the satellite control software. This one's actually set up for one of the new satellites. This is set up for SV-125, I see. And you can see all the data points. There's, there's something like 100,000 different parameters that can be controlled by operators here to make adjustments to configure it differently, and almost 2,000 commands or so that they can send back and forth to move the satellite, to turn attributes off and on, uh, and to control all aspects of the satellites. Uh, I think people know of us from sort of our services from 20 years ago, the big satellite phones, but don't appreciate that satellite devices have gotten to be quite small. Uh, in fact, in many cases, they're built into a truck or a ship or into an airplane that you don't even see them. Uh, they're being put on shipping containers or on oil and gas pipelines and on, on solar wind farms to bring information back and make, make uh, businesses more efficient. Uh, I think people know our humanitarian side. They know that we're the first on the scenes when really bad things happen and we're critical when you're at the North Pole or in the ocean, but they don't appreciate probably that we're, we've, over the years, become part of the communication fabric of, of the planet, really, and are integrated into so many things with other technologies, like cell phone technology, uh, to do many, many important things. And with this launch today, and with the new satellites that we're putting into space, and the whole new network, we're just excited about so many more things that we can do. It's almost like a, an innovation engine that really is unique that we can create so many new things from. And uh, it, it's created so many things over the last 20 years, I can't even imagine the kinds of things we're going to create over the next 20. T-minus five minutes and five seconds in counting down, still heading for an on-time launch. Currently on the Falcon 9, we have finished loading fuel on both the first and second stage. The liquid oxygen is continuing to load. That'll last until the last two to three minutes. The strong back right now is getting ready to begin moving away from the rocket. The clamp arms will open up and the strong back will recline to the launch position of 77 and a half degrees. Currently, the Iridium satellite is on internal power, working no issues. They are ready to go. The range is also ready. Everything is clear for Falcon 9 launch to head down range and for the first stage to land. And finally, the weather, upper altitude, 
Winds look good. We've just heard the call out. The cradle arm's coming open. As the strongback prepares to move away from the Falcon 9. As I was saying, on the weather, upper altitude winds are good. Uh, load conditions are good there. Ground level is good. Uh, we just have the traditional Vandenberg fog, but hopefully we'll get a view from the Falcon 9 as we head into space. So currently we're coming up T minus three minutes and 50 seconds and counting. Everything continues to go on time. We're going to listen in to the last minutes of the count along with you. We'll be back during the plus count to explain events as they happen on our way to space. Strong back lower proceeding nominally, winch payouts tracking the target. Stage two TBC motions nominal. Stage one locks slow down. Stage 2 TVC motion nominal. Stage 2 TVC motion nominal. Stage 1 locks load closed out. Rock, LC on countdown one, please verify range is green. Rock, range is green. Strombeck lower is ended, Strombeck's locked out, 77 and a half degrees. Stage two locks low, closed out. Vehicles and self align. Gas closeouts have started. DTAP setup complete. FTS, announce AFTS is ready for launch. AFTS is ready for launch. Ground side gas closeouts complete. Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. Stage 2 pressing for flight. LD verify go for launch. LD go for launch. T minus 30. Stage one's pressing for flight. Fifteen. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Lift off the Falcon 9. Prop ABI RC and GMC can see the computer 3.170 for post launch flight operations. GC, move to post launch pad operations to secure the pad on pad net A. Copy, we'll go.
9 power and telemetry nominal. 2 plus 53 seconds into flight. We've just heard the call outs that engines are nominal. We've also got good status on the avionics system. We're coming up on maximum dynamic pressure. T plus one minute, 30 seconds into flight. Okay. Maryland engines continue to perform nominally. We've heard a call out of MVAC D engine chill has begun. That indicates that propellants now are being fed to the front of the turbo pump on the upper stage engine to chill it as we get ready to light the upper stage engine in just about 45 seconds. We're coming up on several major activities all at once. At about T plus two minutes and 24 seconds, we should have cutoff of the nine first stage engines, stage separation, ignition of the upper stage engine, and right afterwards, reignition of three first stage engines for boost back burn. Let's listen and watch together. Stage separation confirmed. Baja AOS. Coming up on T plus three minutes. Stage separation reignition successful. The first stage boost back burn is underway. We're coming up on fairing separation now around the 10 iridium satellites. Fairing separation confirmed. Three minutes and 23 seconds into flight. You can hear the applause at SpaceX. Smaller crowd, many of our folks drove up actually to watch the launch from Vandenberg, just about 180 miles up the road from us. First stage, grid fins are deploying. You can see the new dark gray titanium grid fins. They deploy a little more slowly than the old lighter weight aluminum fins. Second stage engine burn continues to look nominal. Chamber pressure is good. Trajectory looks good for the second stage. Four minutes into fight, you can see the grid fins are fully deployed. We're listening for when the drone ship has what they call AOS, acquisition of signal. That'll indicate the telemetry from the first stage is being received by the drone ship. The drone ship does not send commands to the first stage in flight. Four and a half minutes into flight, the upper stage engine continues to perform nominally. Stage one and stage two power and telemetry remain nominal. T plus five minutes into flight. Second stage continues to perform well, carrying 10 iridium satellites to a parking orbit. The next major event is entry burn. We will light three Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. That'll slow us down for entry through the atmosphere. That's a fairly long burn, should be coming up in about 30 seconds.
Six minutes into flight, you can see the entry burn is underway on the Falcon 9 first stage. Bringing it back to the drone ship, titled, Just Read the Instructions, Awaiting It in the Pacific Ocean. Stage one, Entry burn is complete. The next burn will be the landing burn. So right now we're coming up on seven minutes. It's actually six minutes and 40 seconds into flight. Stage one is headed back to the drone ship in the Pacific Ocean. Second stage continues to head south towards Antarctica as we head for a parking orbit, which is expected shortly after T plus nine minutes. Ship. AOS on the drone ship means acquisition of signal, the drone ship now receiving telemetry from the Falcon 9 first stage. As a reminder, weather conditions are borderline out at the drone ship. We'll hopefully see a landing coming up here shortly. Landing burn is underway. Stage two power to one three the bottom. And you can tell by the cheering in the background, first stage, Falcon 9 landed. Flight 38 has landed on Just Read the Instructions, our drone ship in the Pacific Ocean, landing at about T plus 7 minutes and 47 seconds, right on time. Meanwhile, the second stage engine at 8 minutes and 13 seconds into flight continues to perform well. We've got less than one minute before we go into our low earth parking orbit. Stage two, ATS has saved. We have Seco. Confirmation of second stage engine shutdown. About nine minutes and 14 seconds into flight. Waiting to hear from the orbit. And you heard the call out. GNC confirms a good insertion orbit. So the first phase of today's flight is now complete. First stage has returned to the drone ship. Second stage is in the desired parking orbit. We're now entering a coast phase. Falcon 9 second stage with the 10 Iridium satellites still on top of it, mounted to a SpaceX dispenser, are heading south, loop underneath the south pole of the Earth, passing over Antarctica, come up over Africa, and so we will have spacecraft deployments coming up in about 51 minutes, at about T plus 51 minutes into flight. Actually, 52 minutes into flight. So what we're going to do right now, there's a bit of a long pause. We've got about another 40 minutes before we get into the next major phase. So we're going to leave you with the animation. We'll be back on the webcast at T plus 50 minutes with live commentary, at which Baja, time we expected. cover the second burn of the upper stage engine, followed by a short pause, and then the deployment of 10 Iridium Next satellites. So with that, we'll see you back here at about T plus 50 minutes.
this is one of the largest commercial satellite system being built today. It's still an incredible feat of engineering that one company can't do alone. It's an opportunity of a lifetime to be on a program of this size and caliber, and it draws the best of the best. We found some of the best companies in the world to partner with. They've shown the propensity to work with us in order to provide a better product for the future. We have the smartest, brightest players in the industry. We have the A-Team. T-plus 50 minutes and 50 seconds since we had the successful launch of Falcon 9. Major event coming up here in just over a minute, a short relight of the upper stage engine. It'll only take us about four seconds lighting the upper stage engine to raise us to the desired circular orbit of 625 kilometers. Currently, we're chilling in the upper stage engine, getting it ready for second ignition. We're pressurizing the liquid oxygen tank, making sure there's enough pressure to meet the inlet conditions of the turbo pumps. We're also using nitrogen gas, cold nitrogen gas, essentially puffing it through small uh, nozzles on the back end of the second stage. That's making sure that everything is settled so that we've got propellants right over the inlet to the pumps for when we spin them and then ignite the Merlin vacuum engine. So we're going to have ignition coming up in about 20 seconds. It'll be a short burn and we'll be back to talk to you about how the orbit looks. Well, you just saw it. We had a successful burn of the upper stage engine. We're coming up on T plus 53 minutes into flight. Duration of the burn looked good. What we're waiting for here is to hear confirmation from the guidance nav and control community that the final orbit is a good one for dispensing the 10 Iridium Next satellites coming up starting in about five minutes from now. Looking at the telemetry coming back from Falcon 9 through the South African ground stations, we've got what, a, what we've got a good orbit for the Iridium Next satellites. Didn't want to leave any doubt there. So the second stage has done its job. We're into the 625 kilometer orbit. The next major event is going to be the deployment of the 10 Iridium Next satellites. Now we hope to bring you as many of the satellite deployments as we can. We do pass from ground station to ground station during this span. Also, some of the satellites are on the back side of the dispenser and not in view of the camera on the second stage. But we might be able to at least bring telemetry indication that the spacecraft has separated. So that will begin in a little under five minutes. So we're going to go back to the graphic. And as we get close, we'll come back and announce as we step through the 15-minute sequence of deploying the 10 satellites for our Iridium customer.
plus 57 minutes since we launched. We're waiting now for the deployment of the first of the 10 Iridium Next satellites. We're currently in a deploy preparation phase on the second stage, waiting to get the deployment command sent themselves. Got a view of the stack. The first satellite is actually at the very top of the stack, slightly off to the side, so we may see a little bit of it. We may not. First the spacecraft deploy confirmed. And we have confirmation of deployment of the first of the 10 Iridium satellites. Next deployment will be coming up in 100 seconds. LOS HPK expected. We're moving into the second deploy. We're also crossing second over spacecraft deploy between ground stations. We have confirmation of the second satellite deployment. We're coming up on the planned third deployment of 10 Iridium Next satellites. LOS Mauritius expected. Third spacecraft deploy confirmed. And we have confirmation of the third spacecraft deployment. We'd had loss of signal over ground station, so it took us a little bit to get data back to make sure that we were in good shape.
And we've got confirmation, the fourth satellite deployed, you can see it drifting off. That's the camera view from our payload attach fitting that mounts the dispenser holding the 10 Iridium satellites, now six of them, to the second stage. We're coming up on the deployment of the fifth of 10 Iridium Next satellites. This one may not be visible. It's on the back side of the stack. And as we suspected, I did not see anything on the video, but we have confirmation that the fifth satellite has deployed successfully. As we prepare for deployment of the sixth satellite, we may be able to see this in view. They begin to dispense from the bottom half, and you can see the sixth satellite has deployed on time. Preparing for deployment of the seventh Iridium satellite. I believe that's the one at the top of the screen, so we might be able to see this one on the second stage camera. Seventh spacecraft deploy confirmed. 
And you see confirmation as the seventh Iridium Next satellite slowly is pushed away from the dispenser stack mounted on top of the Falcon 9. We're preparing for deployment of the seventh, uh, poss pardon me, the eighth of ten satellites. This is on the back side of the dispenser. We will not be able to see this on the camera view. Eighth spacecraft deployed. And we have confirmation. Eighth is deployed. Moving on to the ninth satellite. This should be the satellite that's directly in view of the camera that you saw there. So we should get a good view of deployment for that spacecraft. Getting ready as the camera switches back to a view of the last two Iridium satellites. Preparing for deployment of number nine. Ninth spacecraft deploy confirmed. Nice clean separation of Iridium number nine. That leaves us with one satellite to deploy. We're just half a minute away from the planned deployment of the 10th and final Iridium Next satellite from the Falcon 9 second stage dispenser. Final spacecraft deploy confirmed.
And we've got confirmation. 10 Iridium satellites deployed, 10 for 10. It's a clean sweep. We can tie a broom to the Falcon 9. So the Iridium satellites have successfully deployed from the Falcon 9. We invite you to follow Iridium on their social media page. They will be providing information in the very near future as the satellites are acquired by the Iridium ground station. So we'll see how their initialization and checkout period begins. But that's going to bring an end to our webcast. It's been a great day for Falcon 9. Counted down, a little foggy at Vandenberg, had an on-time launch. First stage had a successful landing on the drone ship. Just read the instructions. Second stage executed two burns, placing the Iridium satellite stack in the desired final orbit. And then we went through just now the 15 minute sequence where this time we actually got to hear and see the 10 satellites deployed over the span of the 15 minutes. So everything looks great today for Falcon 9 and for Iridium. We'd like to wrap up by thanking our Iridium Next customer and as well as the U.S. Air Force for range support and of course the Federal Aviation Administration, our licensing agency for the launch. We invite you to follow us on our Twitter feed as well as Instagram and our SpaceX.com website. So thanks for letting us share the mission of Falcon 9 with you. And until our next flight, goodbye.